Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, I wish you have a good day today and tomorrow and Friday and the weekend, inshallah. Today we'll talk about a very difficult subject. It's very difficult for me since I am going to talk about scholars and about the new preachers who are actually standing on the front stage of uh, Islamic da'wah. But before that, I would like to give a warning of especially about the crisis in uh, Rohingya, in Arakan. Please, before you donate to any organization, check that such organization has a full registration in Bangladesh and in Myanmar. This is number one. Number two, has the permission to work during the crisis at the moment from Bangladesh government and Myanmar government. I'm not going to promote any organization, but I'm trying to say, please be careful, because there's a lot of cowboys are using the opportunity to raise fund, actually, and they don't have any operation there. Coming back to our, our talk today, the likes and hashtag scholars. Nowadays, you find a lot of people standing for the religion, for Islam, reading some books, but don't have the knowledge. They can rehearse, regurgitate, but they cannot comprehend and digest and opinionate because we are going to go through how scholars became scholars in the good old days. Before we starting talking about those likes scholar or hashtag scholar or Instagram scholar or whatever you call them, as youngster being attracted to the social media. What makes me annoyed one day that a young man came from America one day and he was in Hyde Park in London. And youngsters knew that he's coming to London. There's more than 10,000, 15,000 youth came and filled Hyde Park. Is this is the quality of our youth? If this is the stamina of our youth? If this is the credibility of our youth? A tick box, a tick, a like, a hashtag? The more hashtag you send, the more people will love you. What is this? Don't be deceived by the hashtag statement comments. Don't be deceived by the number of likes. And if we talk about scholars, let me take you in a long journey about what scholarity or scholarship will be will mean. This is the journey of knowledge. The son of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Abdullah, asked him, Daddy, to sit down in my city and listen to a learned scholar or to travel as much as you can to many cities to learn from many scholars. His father, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, told him, Son, travel as much as you can. Listen to the people of Kufa, the people of Basra, the people of Mecca, the people of Medina, the people of every city. Learn from as many sheikh as you can. The social or the philosopher Ibn Khaldun, he wrote in his introduction about the journey of seeking knowledge. And meeting scholars, seeking knowledge and meeting scholars and learning from scholars. This means it will give you more knowledge. Why? Because people like to learn. People to like to know the manner, akhlaq, and the behavior, attitude of the scholars that they are learning from. Sometimes they read, sometimes they hear about them, but the best time when they sit down and be with them, interact with them, listen to them, ask them, listen to the discussion between them and their students. And what Ibn Khaldun said in this, okay, the pioneering and the ability of the young learned scholar will come from the face-to-face -face discussion with the scholar. Not from just 
reading a book. Do you have any book here? No. Not from just reading a book. Okay. Hey, I have the book with me and I come and give you a talk. No. Or I have a video to listen to. Yes, but not good enough. Or I have a message or read you or whatever it is. Yes, good, but not good enough. What Ibn Khaldun said? Okay. The pioneering and the ability of the young learned student is from face-to-face interaction with the ulama. This will be more solid. More solid. The more sheikhs you listen to, the more solid in your knowledge you become. The more learned you become. The more vision that you have. Because you hear to different opinions, different culture, different schools of thoughts, different uh, uh, understanding, different philosophy of thinking. The more sheikhs you listen to. But those hashtag and likes so-called dua or scholars don't have this quality or criteria. Okay. A proverb said in the good old days that knowledge does not give you a part of it unless and until you give the knowledge all your life. I said in Arabic, العلم لا يعطيك بعضه حتى تعطيها تعطيه كلك. Knowledge does not give you a part of it unless you give your life for seeking knowledge. Imam al-Shabi, al-Shabi, he was asked, how did you get all this knowledge, the wealth of knowledge you have? He said four things. First of all, I'm not going to, I was not depending on somebody to spoon feed me. Not depending on somebody spoon feeding me. It's number one. Number two, walking from a town to town, from a village to village, from a city to city, from a country to country, from a continent to continent. يبقى الأول نفي الاعتماد السير في البلاد الصبر كصبر الحمار be patient like the donkey is and be as early in my days as the blackbird. So I say it again I did not lean in anybody not depend on anybody I was walking from a country to a country from a city to a city from a town to a town being patient like the donkey and wake up as early as the blackbird. Abu Abdullah ibn Manda, Muhammad ibn Ishaq, was born in 310 uh, Hijri and died in 395. He learned from how many scholars, how many sheikhs? 1,700 in different cities, different towns, different countries. 1,700. And he was writing. And writing, and writing, and writing, and writing. And when he came back to his country, okay, to where he came from, okay, he had about 40 she camels loaded with these big sacks. And his children, the family realized that this might be a lot of clothes for us. It wasn't. You know what it was? It was the notes that he is taken from the 1,700 ulama and mashayikh that he learned from. From them. One of the uh, Imam uh, Ja'far al Mustaghfiri asked him, When you hear, you listen to the sheikhs, how many hearings you had? You know what he said? 5,000 sun. Sun in Arabic, sun in, sun in Arabic means 10 parts. 10 parts could fill a basket of food. 5,000 as if you fill this 5,000 baskets of food of paper that he has listened to from the ulama. Before he came back from his journey to his country to start to give an opinion about Islam or about the religion, about life. This is one scholar. I'm just not going to go through the big names of ulama like uh, Abu Hanifa, like uh, Al-Shafi, like Imam Ibn Malik, no, I'm just, I mentioned Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal first, then I'm going to go with those people who most of us do not know their names. And he said, uh, 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 Ibn Ishaq, 
He said what? He said, this is not what people like or desire to have. You know what it is? It is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Al-Razi, who is Abu Sa'd al-Samman ibn Ismail ibn al-Hussein ibn Zanjawiyya al-Razi, learned from 3,600 sheikhs in his journey. Okay? And he traveled extensively from far west to far east. And he was the sheikh of al-Mu'tazila of his time. Imam al-Sufi Abu al-Waqt is Sajzi. He went with his father to seek knowledge at the age of 10 years. 10 years. He was walking. You know what his father was teaching him to do? He was giving him to hold two stones. Preparing him to hold the books and the paper of knowledge in both hands. And when he was working from a city to a city or town to town with his father at the age of 10, he was so tired. So the people were looking at his father and himself and saying, Please, Abu Ismail, we can give you a donkey, we can give you a horse, we can give you a camel to help you and your son to take you from this city to this city. The father refused. And he said what? In Arabic first. Allah and narkab fi talab a hadith God forbid. If I use a vehicle or an animal while going to seek the, the hadith of the Prophet or the knowledge about hadith of the Prophet if, not, if my son is not going to be able to walk I will carry him on my shoulder as a sign of respect to the Prophet ﷺ and this hadith. This is uh, Al-Imam Al-Sufi Abu Al-Waqt Al-Sajzi. Imam Al-Qurtubi, most of you know who is Al-Qurtubi. Has got two journeys. Okay? So Egypt, Syria, Palestine, Baghdad, Hejaz. First one was 14 years. Second one was 20 years. He was walking on foot. He was so strong, tall, he did not ride any horse or a donkey or a camel during his journeys. And one of his best characters, not apart from being humble and show humility, he was attending as many janazah as he can. Why he's attending janazah? To remind him of his life and the life to come. And this was Al-Imam Al-Qurtubi, who was coming from Qurtuba, as you know that. Al-Imam Al-Razi, okay, he went to seek knowledge, in one journey, it took him about 7, 000, uh, seven years. Seven years in his first journey. And he was calculated how many, how much was the distance he was making. And he made a calculation of 1,000 uh, uh, farsakh. And farsakh at that time is one and a half hour walking or three miles or five kilometers. So in his journey, he just walked for 5,000 kilometers. After that, he stopped counting. He stopped calculating. Okay, because it would be too much. And his journey did not end at the end of the 5,000 kilometers. Okay? In the first journey, he went from the far west, in Moroccan area, to the far east. Going walking to Egypt, Ramla, Jerusalem, Ramla, Asqalan, Ramla, Tabariya, Damascus, Hems, Antakya, Tarsus, Hems, Bisan, Raqqa, Baghdad, Sham, River, Nile, Kufa, so on, so on, so on foot. This is Imam Al Razi. Last but not least, 
الإمام أبو سعد السمعاني أبو سعد السمعاني born in a city called Maru in 506 and died in 562 يعني he lived only for 56 years 56 years and his journey to seek knowledge was for 20 years 20 years his father took him with him when he was his age was three and a half years then his father died at the age of five years his uncles took him to look after him and when he became a teenager he started to be attracted to the knowledge of Quran hadith sirah fiqh So on, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. So you start to go in depth to learn all this knowledge. Okay? You know how many sheikhs he visited during his 20 years journey? 7,000 sheikhs. 7,000 sheikhs in the 20 years journey. He made three journeys. The first one was for 10 years between 529 to 538 Hijri. The second one was for six years between 540 to 546. And the third one was four years between 549 to 552. And after completing that 20 journey, listening to the 7,000 sheikhs in many countries, you know how many cities he visited? More than 100 cities. Like he coming from different parts of the world. North Africa, Kufa, Khorasan, Iraq, uh, Mecca, Medina, and others. And in the last 10 years of his life, he wrote 68 books. After a journey of knowledge, which started at the age of three and a half years. When he was teenage, ager, he was not having a PlayStation or games. I don't know what you get to your children, but he was having this desire to go and learn Quran and the Hadith and so and so and so and so. Another story about. Abu Abdurrahman Baqiy ibn Mukhalad al-Andalusi. He was 20 years. Andalusi which comes from Andalusia. Okay, at that time. And he wanted to go to visit Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. From? From where? From Andalus. From Spain, Portuguese, and Morocco. And he walked on foot. On foot. If you can imagine coming Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, then cross the Sinai, and from crossing Sinai, going to whatever you call it, uh, uh, so a part of Saudi Arabia now, or Jordan, or whatever it is, to reach Baghdad in Iraq. So how many thousand miles that you can imagine a man is coming to walk it, to listen to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. When he arrived there, you know what happened? Ahmad ibn Hanbal عنه, was under house arrest because of the problem of the creation of Quran. The Khalifa was saying the Quran is created. Ahmad ibn Hanbal was saying Quran, Quran is the word of Allah and that's it. So he was very upset to come this journey and found that the man is under house arrest. What happened then? He went to the big mosque and he found somebody called Yahya ibn Ma'in was talking intelligently, intellectually about giving the opinion about many scholars. So Abu Abdurrahman spoke to him privately and told him, what do you think of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal? See, but the, the, the respect between ulama, Yahya ibn Ma'in said, Imam Abu Ahmad ibn Hanbal? Oh, he is the Imam of Muslims, the best. And the most noble amongst them. 
did not have the time to black to 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 backbite Imam Muhammad Muhammad politically. Anybody can say about Imam Muhammad Muhammad at the time because the state is against him or was against him. Like nowadays, when the state is against certain Imam, we badmouth them. We speak bad about them. We backbite them. But he said, no, at that time, he is the Imam of Muslimin and the best among them and the most noble amongst them. So this Abu Abdurrahman went to the house of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal and knocked the door because he came from Andalusia just to listen to Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And they told him, I am so and so and so coming from so far and they want to listen to what you have. He explained the condition, the political condition and the security condition around his house. He said, but since you came all this distance, let me entertain you. You come to me every day as a beggar, begging me, okay? And I will open the door for you. And when you come to my house inside, we'll speak about something. And when you go out, don't go to the big mosque. Don't talk about you coming to me. Just keep it to yourself. So Abu Abdurrahman was coming every day, covering his head, putting all the paper in his sleeve at that time. And I got a small sack for a beggar. Okay. And walking slowly to reach the imam's house every night. And every night Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal was entertaining him, teaching him one hadith or two hadith or three hadith. Till he collected about 300 hadith from Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal. This is a process of seeking knowledge. What we upset us most, certain little miserably looking individual calling themselves dua or scholars who just know philosophy and just understand to create conflict and to talk about the differences and talk about the strange opinions and talk about the extreme points coming, sitting on their, what do you call it when I say this, at home having coffee and tea and biscuit and living in a very luxurious life and criticize those people who walked for thousands and thousands and thousands of miles for days and nights, months and years to bring you the knowledge that you need. When I talk about the title, you youngsters become so ignorant and so uh, weak and so vulnerable that you value a scholar with the number of likes. You value a scholar with the number of hashtag. This is not a scholarship. This is ignorance, utter ignorance, which lead us to follow strange opinion, to follow people who are not a, neither a scholar, not learned individuals, just parrots, 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 parrots. Paris, bum, 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 bum. The more likes they have, the more you follow them. This is ignorance. Ignorance. I talk about one of the scholars at his teen age. Teen age, from the age of 11, 12, 13. He started to be attracted to know the knowledge of hadith and the Quran. Somebody at the age of three and a half years was accompanying his father. Somebody at the age of 10 years, his father was taking him with him. And they became great scholars. These are not the most famous scholars that we have in our life. Like Abu Hanifa al-Nu'man, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbar, Imam ibn Malik, uh, Malik Imam Shafi, uh, uh, or Imam al-Shia, his name is A'azab Allah, I'm sorry, in the name of Allah, in the name of Allah, in the name Jafari, Jafar al-Sadiq, radiallahu anhu. So all those people in their history, in their history, they have no time for luxury. They have no time for talk show. They have no time for likes, for photographs, for images. Huh? For no, they have all the time 
to strengthen their character, solidify the message to deliver, to leave a heritage for humanity. So please do not distract, be distracted by the number of likes on my Facebook or the number of likes on his Facebook because people sometimes can pay for this. I gave you an example at the end. Can you go to the last one, please? No, the one you wrote. We made two campaigns. The UN Secretary General was making a campaign for the famine, expected famine in Yemen, Somalia, South Sudan, and Ethiopia. You know what we did at the humanitarian forum? We went to the Facebook and we advertised this campaign, the statement of the Secretary General. And we paid about $600 for a month. The organic reach from our Facebook was 46,000 likes. 46,000 likes. But the paid one reaches 2.5 million. You know, organic, 46,000 likes. Paid, 2.5 million. When you see me as Mr. Hashtag scholar on Mr. Like scholar he said, Oh my god, 2.5 million are liking his speech. Waste of time. I paid for it. We paid for it. And you know that. The second one was for the statement about Islamophobia and the Islamophobe. The same Secretary General of the United Nations was making in January this year. And we made the same advertisement for five, six hundred dollars for a month. Okay. The organic reach from our Facebook page was 106,000 likes. But the paid one reaches 2.5 million, again, 2.48 uh, million. 2.48 million against 100,000 and 2.54 million against 46,000. This is what I'm saying to you. Youngsters, people, women, men, elderly, don't be distracted by the number of likes I have on my Facebook because I pay for it. I'm following one individual on my Facebook without mentioning his name. Whatever he might send, 50 posts every day. Oh my God, every post, few hundred people. As if everybody on earth is watching his post. I am becoming sick. After that, if my Facebook page will attract a few hundred thousand, or like somebody saying that I have a family or, or group or friends of a million or five million or two million, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, I can make business out of it. Knowledge and scholarship is not about money-making machine. This could be very good for a business company, very good for a politician, very good for lobbying machine, but not very good for people who call themselves scholar on dua and fooling you. Because those are the real people. Those are the real people who spend all their life walking on foot, seeking knowledge, listening to scholars, respecting every opinion, learning from every opinion, not differentiating between the, the opinions of, of this scholar or this is scholar, or this is scholar, or this is scholar. It's not a football hooligans. It's not a football hooligans. It's not a nationalism. It's not Manchester United, Arsenal. It's not uh, uh, Barcelona, Real Madrid. It's not Ahli and Zamalek, or Nasr, and uh, whatever it is in Saudi Arabia. No! It's knowledge. Knowledge is the spirit of life. And if people give their life to knowledge, knowledge will give them back as much as they can comprehend of what they have in their intellectual capability. So to conclude, stop calling scholars as scholars by the number of likes they have. 
I can fool you. And tomorrow I can pay a lot of advertisement and I can get my, my, my Facebook going from the thousands into the millions. Is it mean? I'm a qualified scholar? No way. No way. Learn about your history. Learn about your country. Learn about how the great scholars, either in science or knowledge or philosophy or others, have made their history and their contribution and put their fingerprints on the face of humanity. And they are making the milestone for all of us up to now, thousand years after they left. If you want to become a legend, if you want to become a legend, give your life to humanity. Give your life to community. Give your life to science. Give your life to knowledge. Give your life to educate the community. And I can say thank you very much for being very patient with me today. OK? And I'm happy to talk to you about this very difficult subject because I was so worried to talk about people that I cannot rise to their footsteps, not to their height, not to their image, not to their standard, to their footsteps, to what they left behind for humanity. If you want to follow, ask, read, learn, seek, don't become fool by following some of the likes and the hashtag bring the rest. The likes and the hashtag scholars. Can you bring go to go to the photo the images? See, this is Imam Abu Ahmad ibn Hanbal who talked about him. Imam Abu Hanifa al Nu'man who talked about him. Imam Ibn Sina who talked about him. And there's some scholars from the West like Leonardo da Vinci, like Addison, like Archimedes and others and others and others. Why we are talking about them nowadays? Because they have contributed with humility to save humanity. God bless you all. And tomorrow I'll meet you at the same time, 11.30 in Arabic. Jazakum Allah khair. نلتقي غدا ان شاء الله الساعه 11 ونص توقيت لندن 1 ونص توقيت مكه نفس الموضوع اللي هم علماء الهاشتاج واللايكس لايك 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 تعالى جود لايك فيري جود لايك جرب لايك لايك كريم لايك والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته